great numbers. Uh, I'm trying to um, keep it on focus and, and, and not drift into any other areas uh, other than the, this the topic here. So my name is Dirk Meyer. I'm with Rocket News Sports, and I, I look out for the learning management system. And I also, uh, part of my roles also support um, schools and teachers with uh, digital resources, um, anything really technology in the classroom. I, they can contact me. I help them out. My my role will change a little bit with um, with sort of a move towards uh, Microsoft Office 365. So I'm taking on uh, sort of a bit of a role in that in the new year. And some power school timetabling and stuff like that. Um, anyways, things are changing. This is not so only to the good. Okay, so I'm glad you came here. Um, what I wanted to present to you today is. Um, uh, the the course review and mapping um, strategy or concept that we did over the last year and a half or so with, uh, with the uh, WCLN, the Western Canadian Learning Network. Um, if you've uh, been to their presentations yesterday, um, you know, for you, what I'm going to show you today is how we worked with in Alberta with these school boards here, uh, how we worked together to review existing course materials and to map them and to have them Alberta sized. Okay. Um, I was just informed that Red Tail Public Schools, a brand new member, so now there's four. Uh, there might be a, a fifth one joining us. So if you are from other school boards, uh, please feel free to contact me or anyone at the WCLN side. They're actually here as well, Bruce and, um, and Brent. Um, what I really strongly feel about when, I, when I'm in my job uh, doing the divisional support role, um, I look at uh, some of my priorities are um, how we make things faster, more efficient for teachers. How do we have them uh, spend less time doing course development and more time teaching. I also look at things like uh, cost savings. Um, not just uh, savings in terms of teacher time, but actual savings around purchasing resources and making them available. Uh, from a system role, I'm also looking at scalabilities. How do I scale something in one school that might be a nice little prototype uh, in an online school? How can I scale that to 10 schools? Or how can I make that available to, we now have, I think, 52 school sites. Okay, so that is where I'm coming from, and this presentation will will show you uh, some of my thinking around it and experiences. <clears throat> these are actual um, comments from participants from these three school divisions. Red Deer was not involved in the uh, first cycle. So the rationale for WCLN is really uh, it takes many shapes and forms. Um, we really need to look at sustainable models uh, to improve learning and sustainable models of course development and maintenance that resonates with teachers. Uh, a sort of a top-down approach, uh, similar to, you know, our courses are uh, to, to something where you don't have any involvement in the creation of these courses at the school level, at the teacher level, it does not resonate as well as uh, opportunities to connect teachers with each other. Um, courses are never done. They're, they're always cycling. They always need, they need to update. We've all have been in the uh, in, in, in a situation where we're, you know, we're given a new teaching assignment, teach this, you never taught it, yeah, but you have a background, so here's a package, start working with it. As a system, a support person, I want to feel comfortable that what I'm uh, suggesting to these teachers or giving these teachers that that is quality, that it is current, and that it has been uh, peer reviewed by more than just one person or one teacher. Uh, I find it interesting that the School Act is actually mandating uh, innovation around creating opportunities for students to meet their standards. And I think this very strongly is part of that. Um, Quality resources, okay, and this is what it's really all about. If you're new to this, uh, you may have heard about the Moodle Hut Group. 
Um, if you haven't, let me just give you a brief upgrade up, up to date. <laughs> Um, for over 10 years now, I've, uh, we, we've been running uh, what's called the Moodle Hub Group. Uh, or a Moodle Hub group. And it's, a, it's a group, a grassroots movement of uh, teachers, administrators, and system administrators that work within the Moodle LMS environment to support themselves. Uh, it came out of the uh, Alberta Distance Learning Consortium, which folded uh, 12, 15 years ago. And some Administrators decided that you know we need support. We need to support each other. That, and so as a result, they they met once a month uh, virtually. The Alberta Moodle Hub group then uh, has survived and has grown with some over 400 active accounts now in the past year. And anyone can join. Anyone can participate in the meetings. Anyone is free to share and is free to take the resources that are on it. There are some limits with it, uh, and there are some very strong limit, limitations with it. And when I look at it from a systemic view, uh, the limits are actually more holding me back to be totally excited about this than looking at the WCLN. Uh, we need accountability. Okay, it's a piece of my uh, of my job is to provide uh, systems, to provide structures in place that allows teachers and schools to provide accountability. Uh, not just around the quality of the of the um, of the resources, but also about uh, the history, archiving. Okay, what did it look what did a, a indigenous uh, cultures course look like three years ago at our school division and what does it look like today? And if there were ever any questions around that, can we answer those? Okay. Uh, predictability. Okay, so we might have, in the Moodle Hub group, we might have a really energetic uh, teacher which happens all the time and they want to share everything. And they share all their courses into it and then they're changing provinces or they're, they're not teaching anymore. Then all their stuff is there, uh, but <clears throat> I can't make any predictions about will this be updated? Is this teacher still there? Can I con connect uh, my teachers with that person? Uh, so what's happening next year with the Moodle Hub? Nobody knows. It's grassroots. Reliability, same thing. Anything that is shared is not reviewed, it's not peer reviewed. Some, some of the stuff is top notch, other stuff are just snapshots of people's work. So you can never accept or uh, you can never um, of the um, you know think that that uh, whatever is on there is, is something that you just plug into your system and, and you're, you're way to go. It takes in some cases a lot of work to to refine those the resources that are shared there. Again, as a system uh, support provider, I, I need more than that. Okay, that might work on a school level, but I, I need more. So that then leads me to uh, to a cycle of course development re review, and WCLN comes in fits perfectly into what I'm looking for, and I think what, what a number of our schools are looking for as well. I know we all know course development takes a lot of time and a lot of money, and one of the things I don't think we're very good at is put a money value on teacher time, tweaking courses. Um, Creating courses from scratch, you know, I, I, I wonder if, if I were to ask online teachers how much time is actually allocated for course development in your time table, you would probably find a very small percentage of their teaching time is allocated to that. Yet they do it. Um, quality courses. The course is never done until it's finished. Okay? We cannot work on the assumption anymore that something that was done 15 years ago in its entirety is still valid and can be used for the kids. There's tweaking needs to take place all the time. We, a few years ago, had discussions in my office and we strongly believe that one-off downloads are not for us anymore. Okay, so we don't want to go to some site, download all that stuff, and then build on top of that. We want to be part of a uh, cycle that provides some resources, quality resources, but then get reviewed and go through a if you have any questions, please interrupt me. Feel free to ask. 
So last year then, Rocky Beach Schools has been a member of uh, WCNN for two years now, I think. And we were the first Alberta board, and now there's five, uh, four. And uh, hopefully in a few years there'll be ten. Uh, in early fall of 2017, the initial team leaders met in Innisfail, just uh, north of Calgary, an hour and a half. Innisfail is the uh, board office at Chino's Edge. Um, in the spring, based on our meeting there in the spring, and I'll go into more detail in, this in, in the next slide. In the spring of 2018, we, uh, we decided to work on these, uh, we do these uh, courses, uh, ELA, English Language Arts, 7 and 8, and then Rocky Blue committed uh, to review Science 7, 8, 9, and Math 5 and 6. So we did that separately. In late spring, uh, we provided feedback and uh, we actually we met, private feedback, mapping results were submitted to WCLN. It was decided that WCLN would hire their own developers to work on uh, <coughs> that language ELA 7 class. Okay. So that's the consensus building that we had in the group. We said that's what we want. End of summer 2018, they were revised and released. Previous to that, we worked together on a physics 20 course where um, Rocky Beach Schools hired two external physics experts and we did two units, right? Uh, yeah, unit and a half. Yeah, unit and a half. Uh, we tried to modernize the BCLN existing course and uh, we built, submitted that, somewhat it was incorporated, we learned how to sort of work together. I can tell you, Two units was ten thousand dollars. Okay, that's what it cost, and that didn't cost didn't take my time. So, team leader meeting in Innis failed. So first, what we did there, we identified key areas of interest, consensus building with the team leaders. We met uh, two learning specialists from RBS went up there. A divisional principal and an associate superintendent from Chinook's Edge was there, and online principal Peace Wabi joined us via Skype. And we met for about two, three hours, one, four morning. Uh, we had a good discussion about what it is that we <coughs> thought might be useful to us to um, to have a you know an Alberta spin on it to have new resources for. It. And uh, CTS was a big one, Human Technology Studies. Yoga is a local. Uh, local course only, yet everybody was excited about it. Uh, career life management was discussed, and some middle school ELA, and I believe we looked at high school uh, science as well. Through consensus building, and I have to say, the group was fantastic. It was very manageable, it was small, it was all new to us, but we agreed on grade seven English. Okay? So, that, that means that we have to sort of, wouldn't say give or take, but we, we listen to each other. We start to trust each other in, in terms of what we're looking for out of this uh, partnership. And we said, okay, let's give it a try. Let's try and make this good. Grade 7 English is something that all of us could benefit from. Face-to-face -face was, uh, we, we thought it was very necessary that our teachers would meet face-to-face -face at least once. Okay. So Chinook's Edge would host the work day at their offices, um, provide a nice lunch. They, they would supply three to four teachers. They ended up supplying four. To work for the day, we came up with three teachers plus two learning specialists, myself and my colleague. So that's five of us showed up. And um, that's wrong. That should be a piece of Swapity actually flew in a teacher from Grand Prairie. Um, we picked her up, drove her in. You know, we went up to, to Innisfail. They took care of their own, everybody paid their own uh, expenses. We thought that it was less than $5,000 to bring these people together. I think, I, I know, I know this. So, what that is then, if you just look at it, you see you have four. You know, seven, eight, plus three or four other more people, ten people, you bring them together from uh, 
various locations within the province for under $5,000. It's incredible <coughs> TV and incredible TV. They're still talking about it. And the results I'll show you in a minute uh, were amazing. So course review, mapping, and development here. Now we're moving into the review of existing courses, the mapping and development of modified courses. Again, so in, in this field, a teacher to support personnel, one division can work together. We looked at, initially, uh, grade seven, English was identified as the only thing to work on, and they quickly said, well, let's go, uh, let's look at eight as well, because there are some overlapping pieces they had uh, previously viewed with the um, ECLN materials, and they, they said there are some pieces that need to come from eight into seven, and some or seven should go to eight or nine. So let's look at seven and eight. We also looked at nine, but we didn't map nine. <coughs> when I say map, by what I mean is look at with a with a fine comb uh, <coughs> ECLN course, WCLN courses, and decide how well it maps to Alberta. The, the number one uh, opposition or question around uh, going, getting on board with, uh, you know, with the out of province organization is around the curriculum mapping, right? And I used to say, um, you know, if you go to middle school and you show teachers a, a, a good resource, they really don't care how well this is mapped because they think and choose whatever they think works with their kids. It's mapped over 80% anyways, but the perception is out there that you know, when you work from a system approach, you want to make sure it's uh, mapped to Alberta. Google Sheets were shared, and here's the agenda for the day. Let me just show that to you. Um, so here was our objective. Oh. What's going on now? <laughs> it's like a little. Okay. What is it? It's Windows P, right? Windows P. Um, there you go. Perfect. So this was the um, <clears throat> the agenda for the day. Objectives. Uh, I think it was, it's it's teacher friendly language, right? None of this, um, uh, you know, fancy edu bubble. Like it's like we want to help align these courses. BCLN used to what now is called WCLN is used to be called BCLN. We want to link resources and outcomes. We want to make recommendations for further improvements. And what we do? Okay, Google Sheets, trial boards. What are we using these for? And then links. Okay, so I'll get, I'll pop to a link, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so you can see here, at the bottom, uh, several sheets listed the on the trail board. The entire junior high or grade five to eight was uh, listed on the trail board, but we worked in seven. And so then all our eight teachers went in. On the left column, you can see the um, the outcomes. Um, you can see a column there. Is it aligned? Strong, medium, weak. Uh, move to. Are they seeing that something should be moved from one from one grade level to another? Comments. Okay. And then related cards. So so these are Trello cards. In case you're not familiar with Trello cards, are they are. It's a, it's a visualizing tool of um, lists of you know cards. I see a lot of cards there, and basically, um, again, each card has a has the um, curriculum outcome there, and it has the ability for uh, to to group those. Okay, um, and then people are have the ability to put comments in here or link. Uh, link other documents or actually add resources to this particular card. So it's a it's a really sort of micro management, micro sharing, micro community uh, thing around outcomes. Okay, so I don't explain that very well, but uh, this entire um, 
entire see more what I just put here and say. By the way, if you think this is cool, <coughs> just let me know because I spent like a week doing this. <laughs> So here they are, right? So this is a nice little uh, view here for all the um, all the outcomes, right? Teacher can can come in here, discover and explore. Click it. There is a more in-depth description of what it is, and comments some activity around these outcomes. Okay, so uh, if you are working with other teachers, they really uh, respond to this very well. This particular sector. So that's what we did there. Um, and we then submitted these, uh, you know, these, these comments. Red means uh, drop entirely, right? Like that doesn't appear in, in grade seven English language arts. So those are the instructions sent to Brent's team. Uh, okay. We don't need this in Alberta. Make us a copy that doesn't have this stuff. So we, we, we. Um, there's comments in here that, you know, they, they're doing in a sense, uh, I think they were doing in a sense, uh, a type of proofreading, but also a type of uh, improving, you know, um, because here we are, eight people looking at it with fresh eyes and basically generating this. So this is a one day's work here. Um, Okay, I th where where these teachers and, and I really think they were quite excited to actually do this work. The conversations that they were had there uh, were really strong. Okay, so and pardon me. Uh, earlier said the outcomes on the left. These are actually this is a resource in the ECLN uh, WCLN course. Right? So look for it. There's a video uh, or TED talk, right? Strong alignment to Alberta curriculum, no comments. Leave it in mind. Um, well, we just have to talk about it. Let's fire it up again. I'm not going to click any links anymore. And yeah. Okay. So then we said, uh, let's let's try and uh, speed this up a little bit. Uh, and so at, at Rockaway School today, we to pull in uh, six teachers on two days and do the same process for uh, seven, eight, nine. That was the fastest science. Seven, eight, nine. That was just like they just organized the day and just. Go through it. Uh, math was really hard. Math mapping was very hard. We had a couple of one math uh, literacy specialists in there, and uh, two other teachers, myself, and it's very hard to look at. Uh, the math curriculum, I don't understand. It's all it's totally general. Uh, everything appears in every grade level. Maybe that's how math works. Uh, so they re resonated with teachers. Lots of discussions. They went beyond their call of duty of that day and actually spent several hours, several days afterwards, to complete the work that they had committed to. And um, I think that's that's a good sign sign on its own on its own on its own. Then uh, WCNN said, "Well, let's you know they're committed. They're saying well, we want to make sure you guys can." Can get going on this, and we want to support you. And we're going to commit the membership fees that you pay in. We're going to commit those into into actual resource development. And so we tried to hire teachers, right? Brent? We had like two or three meetings where we we're trying to convince. I think it was three or four interested Alberta teachers uh, paid uh, with. I think a six month uh, window of work was fairly generous, or four to six months. But we could not get a uh, Alberta teacher committed, which was okay. You know, you have to say, okay, well, that's too bad. Normally, the project would have stalled uh, for a guy in my role because I wouldn't have anyone to do it, right? Well, 
Now, Brent and his team stepped in. They said, we have developers, and we can, we can do this for you guys. And that's what they did. And so out of that then came the realization that the teachers, at least, that were involved there, our teachers, the, the uh, English teachers, they enjoyed critiquing. They said that several times. They enjoyed looking at a resource, making their comments on it, seeing if it fits, how to improve it. That kind of work really resonated with them, and they really accelerated that. Which was kind of surprising to me, actually. Uh, and then finally, uh, we came we come to a course release and monitor phase. You know, um, fancy word to basically say, okay, these are now available to all the schools that are part of this. Um, as an ongoing effort, I'm going to keep gathering feedback from teachers. We want to encourage teachers to participate in the WCLN forums, uh, raise awareness with the school admin and teachers that these are available. Continue to promote multi-use cases for available courses. Uh, sometimes there's a perception that these are just online courses, yet um, they really lend themselves to, uh, to to enrich your 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 brick and mortar school instruction as well, uh, or to in various situations you can use these. So, and it's sometimes not entirely obvious uh, that you know to too many people. Um, some random thoughts. Uh, you know, how does this work? How much does it cost? What could it look like? Those are all questions that, that pop up. Um, I've tried to tell you or explain to you what it looks like. Um, it, uh, when you when you do the math, you're you're not you're not losing money. I guarantee you that. When you when you count teacher time as having a dollar value mind, then you actually make it count some money. I, I guarantee you that. Um, challenges with unpredictable funding from government is a big driver for us. Um, experienced myself a couple of times where resources were made available and then they disappear overnight, um, or uh, leadership changes at the ministerial level and sets different priorities. Um, the trickle effect is huge. The trickle effect down to the school, down to the teacher level is huge when something doesn't become available anymore. Uh, so those are just some thoughts I have. Thinking beyond uh, online schools, every student has definitely gets, gets something out of these courses. Um, Sure, I'm missing a few things, but I'll bring it up to the next slide. Really, uh, if you want to um, contact me directly through my email, go right ahead. I'd like to just open it up for discussion now. We have um, <coughs> maybe half an hour left, 20 minutes or so. I could show you more examples of the courses that are there, um, but I thought it's worthwhile to just really discuss uh, how something like this maybe could work for you. What are some other roadblocks that you see? Um, potential, sorry, I mean, you guys can come up uh, and, and yeah, I guess we could, uh, just from the WCLM's perspective on this project, uh, yeah, it, it's bringing that group together was, was really well done and well organized. We're comfortable with Trello and, and Google, and I know that some of the group was a bit hesitant on us having full access to looking at all the critiques, but but we have thick skin. I mean, we're basically, we put out courses and we evolve them based on feedback. We get lots of negative feedback on certain things and we try to keep working things. Uh, so constantly beta courses, if you could say. Um, and, and so the feedback we got on the English was, was really well organized and well thought out. Uh, the, science, the feedback on the science, certainly we had to take the courses and and move a lot of our materials around and, and develop a few little extra stuff. Same with the physics. With the English, our English uh, specialists, they sat down with it and said, yeah, like a lot of these comments are just plain old good feedback. I mean, they had a really good group of people sitting together and talking about this, and they came up with great ideas. So why don't we just make an ELA 7 and, and aim it at covering both groups' needs, and, and we could just make a better course out of it. 
Um, and so all in all, the project was beneficial to us, uh, certainly. Um, and, and yeah, it was fun to kind of work in that direction. So with that gone ahead, we're waiting for the feedback on the 7, and we put out emails on that. And um, this year, we'll continue on, and we'll work into the 8, and we'll work on a go backwards with the science, go into the science 8. And so we'll just kind of continue evolving things and look for feedback from people. And so uh, on our end, it was a, it was a, a really good project. You know, it was beneficial to both of us. It's interesting to note that the previous slide that you talked about, you know, the why you went there, it's identically the same reason why Brent and I and our small group created them. So identical, right? Uh, we have the same problems of easy, unpredictable government policy, uh, unpredictable funding, not funding way less than Alberta's. Uh, and so I was spending as a school principal $25,000 a year getting this far in development, uh, my teachers were just rambling every day to try to, to uh, create their own, and uh, it wasn't working. So we, we re reinvented a model that had grown in DC, known as schools from years ago. Brett was involved with that at that time. I wasn't connected. Um, and the whole point was because we needed to. We needed to create something outside of government that would allow us to move forward to support our teachers. And we started off in four school districts. And now we're close to 60 across the two provinces, including the Yukon Territory. We've been part of the group now for about six, seven years. And we do get inquiries from Saskatchewan and some, some from Manitoba in a more exploratory way, uh, and Northwest Territories. Um, really, it's up to them if they want to. They're not here to tell me, but they just say, hey, here's what we've done. It works. You guys want it. And actually, it was Dirk's, uh, um, Dirk and his, uh, his, one of his colleagues said, uh, uh, twisted our arm and say, hey, one, let us start sharing with Alberta. So we had to change our, our constitution structure to allow us to do that. And, uh, finally, this past summer, so we're completely legal now. <laughs> Before we were just going, okay, hey. <laughs> now we're, we're the whole concept is to take uh, that what's worked for us, share it across Western Canada. That's why the name. And perhaps beyond, but really, we don't want more work. We want Better courses. Right? And so we get it to any dollars generated in this province, get reinvested by And hopefully that grows to a point where it's self sustaining in a collaborative fashion, which is the actual kind of something. So as you're crossing over provincial uh, ministries, yeah. are you finding any challenges with uh, programs of studies, or are you working with the common threads you already have to generate the work you've done? I think common threads is the, is the key. We, have, we haven't really had any issues. Uh, one of our uh, close partners in BC is, is the Ministry of Open School, and they, they did a lot of work uh, this past couple of years to convert a lot of the materials to HTML5 and, 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 and basically said, hey, take it. We asked them, you know, can we share this in Alberta without any issues? And absolutely. So, really, you know, the goal is to try to get to a more open source. Unfortunately, uh, open source is only great if you have an external funding uh, mechanism. We don't. Our, our district funds everything you can see. Government yeah, hasn't been able to uh, create budgets and mechanisms effectively to uh, sustain what we need in the school setting. So, by going grassroots and growing that upwards through the common threads, we're far better off and they're happy with that. They don't want more work either, they, they, but, but what we're doing is more effective for getting the job done. Um, so we still work with them closely where it makes sense, but uh, we don't, um, we're not beholden to them any longer. So if a political shift occurs, which happens every four or five years in most provinces, you know the politics and you see probably just as much as we know the ones in Alberta. You don't want to be, we're, we're working with kids. Any reliability, we have staff that, you know, 35 year career, our goal is to create some stability, but keep pushing the envelope so our quality goes up. Just, just to clarify the comment in there, we tend to think of the ministry or Alberta education as being one cohesive unit that acts as one entity. In reality, Open School works independently in terms of it has a mandate within that, 
but it's not at the policy level of the Ministry of Education, ergo the political level of the accountability of the elected government. So they're working in a managerial operational area that they have a certain mandate, which is a little different because there's a Western Protocol Agreement that was done, but that's at that policy ministerial level, and and that's not as easily successful as at the grassroots level of working there. The fact that open school is involved at that level, I think, is a, is a is a bonus to them. But also, I think the abundant caution is a political change or somebody looking at it differently as a deputy could say, stop doing that. But it doesn't matter anymore because we're an independent society and. Um, the only thing that could throw a wrinkle in this is for some reason they decided to start doing it again, and that would be okay. Uh, then, developing courses. Then you get that much more. <laughs> yeah. and, and what's interesting as well, the same thing in Ontario by comparison, is uh, TILO, Technology Enabled Learning Ontario, which used to be e-learning Ontario, uh, they produce content and they fund the provincial learning management system for that. And yet, there's a consortium of the school boards in both the Anglophone, uh, Catholic, and, and public, as well as the Francophone, that continue to produce content collectively and together because what is produced is not necessarily um, as sufficient. The difference is, is that they don't have to produce quite the amount of content and have to do it all the time the way in which it does in Western Canada where there's the consortia have, they, they, there's no provincials, you know, materials that are there. And in Alberta, ADLC does do that sharing and has been at that table and been contributing. Um, the difficulty is is that the design principles by which ADLC follows and also their third-party content agreements uh, for copyright licenses don't make it easily shareable. Whereas, I mean, how do you how do you address that at WCLN? Um, basically, all of our developers must sign a contract that says that they work history of copyright infringement and that anything that we, uh, we create through their work is now owned by the consortium. Uh, so 100 percent of what we use is ours. Before we have written permission to use it, that's particular yeah. open school. We've been donated a couple of publishers have given us their textbooks when they retired from publishers and so um, we've, we've inherited a whole bunch of uh, database um, elements, um, particularly in math and science, like from various provincial organizations. So all of that comes together under the WCLN, sorry, WCLN banner, um, shares back, and that was why they gave it to us. It, this is for, for kids and uh, use the staff uh, who like to contribute this. So that's been very, that was very uh, generous of those folks. And then of course everything else over the last 13, Actually, more than that, closer to 20 years that we've um, developed uh, as part of the CMA. It's been a long time to get there. So, unlike in Ontario, where their Ministry of Education claims copyright <clears throat> and restricts the use of any of the materials that they provide in that province, it's open for use within the consortium. <laughs> Is there, what happens if I want to share it outside and beyond the consortium? The, uh, Key is that we don't sell licensing, we sell mentorships. Right? We're not about selling a license to you. We don't license one or two courses, it's all or nothing. Right? Because the whole point is to give it back to the group. Only members can use the material. Why? A funded model relies on. Without that, those dollars and it crashes to a halt. So, uh, you know, we've had a few member districts that have chosen not to. Sign up again, and I have to write a letter saying, please ensure that you remove all content from the CLN from your servers and that your teachers are aware that that's you've chosen to discontinue a membership. And uh, what usually happens, I get a fantastic phone call saying, oh, we made a mistake, uh, we want to move forward. And, and you know, and it's not our, it's not our, our goal isn't to put the ring to say, hey, if you want to use this collaborative. Then pitch in a pittance. We're talking, you know, the average uh, membership is four thousand dollars a year, um, and they're they're using access or getting access to God knows what courses. For, you know, we like to say two hundred thousand. It's probably closer to a million dollars worth of additional content. Right? Uh, 
Is that for the district then, or is that per school? When we, when we sign on, um, at this point in time, we go through a person within the district structure, okay, who's responsible for the membership. They have to guesstimate how many students would be using this material. We go by the honor system. Um, they give us that figure that determines their membership for the whole district. We're not into policing how you use it on your district. We just want you to know that it's for use of the district, not your best friend who works for uh, a tutoring service down the road and, and someone you know in Asia that you know might use regular international schools for you. We tend to focus on public schools only because they're simpler to work with. As soon as we tried, we tried it in three different private schools. <coughs> They're unfortunately structured as businesses, and we're not perfect in our development. We don't want to come back on the group because we're doing our best to improve things. But um, we had a situation where one of them were running up to us. A businessman in Korea. Uh, okay, we're done. So we, we had that kind of real quickly. And that was unfortunate. I screwed this person that the school's now closed because of this. And British Columbia said, no, we're not going to do that. So, you know, that's an example of, of why we stuck with public. And what I mean by public, publicly funded 100%. So it's not part of that. I mean, either, either uh, public or capital system, right? You see that's probably public in Saskatchewan or other jurisdiction or something else. So, Comment, Dirk, you made yesterday about membership because of more than content, but about the membership costs for Rocky View. Yes, I, I, I'm asking the comment artist, and, and really, um, the membership fees that we pay, we receive that money back many times. I, I'm 100% convinced. Okay, so we, I'm, I'm not sure how much it is that we pay. I think it's between six and eight thousand dollars that our school in this case per year for six thousand this year. Six thousand this year we pay. Okay, so the six thousand then means that we've agreed to working with WCLM uh, materials with about uh, five hundred students. Okay, that's kind of how that works. It's not how many students are in your district, right? Uh, it, the, 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 the funding, the membership works, how many kids are accessing this material, right? And then that role, I come in and I make, I talk to my, my boss, and I say, Kevin, what do you think? Or he actually comes to me and I say, you know, roughly this many, okay? So that is $6,500 for us, was $6,000. Now, the, um, we get this back, not only by now being able to provide, and I'll show you uh, what we provide to our teachers, um, some 80 plus quality courses, okay? Um, that's what we provide them in one shot, it's all there, right? When when I go to uh, eDynamics, we once bought 45 courses and it was $25,000 for one year, okay? so. Now we go to BCL to WCLN and we have this list of courses. Most of these are WCLN materials. I've added some of these, some of our own stuff in there. Um, some of these depend on uh, math uh, providers, content. Yeah, just one sec there. Our teachers can log into any of these courses. Our students can log into any of these courses without anybody uh, you know, enrolling them. Now students won't see answer keys, they can't uh, necessarily do all the quizzes, right? But this is open within our system. And so for 6,000 bucks I was able, we were able to provide this massive amount of quality content. Uh, we're buying Rosetta Stone licenses, 70 licenses this year. We used to buy 120. We get a $35 per license deal when you're part of WCLN. So um, that's um, three times, uh, you know, seven, like we saved, uh, sorry, um, $35, we bought 50 this year, plus $1,500 saving right there off of that, okay? Uh, content connection, math provider, we buy 500 licenses we bought last year, we get half, $10 
as opposed to 20. Okay, so that's $5,000 right there. The study for it, um, if you buy them individually, it's $40. So it used to be $40, but you pay 20. Okay? And we have, I think we bought 300 study for it licenses. That's six thousand dollars. So you can see we're making money just by these parties. I'm not trying to sell you something. I'm just saying, hey, as a as a public school system support person, uh, this makes a lot of sense to us because we're actually saving money. My presentation that I showed you there with with uh, bringing teachers together and and PE and course development, etc. That is all outside of all the savings that I just listed. So. Um, Commercial providers of content and of services love marketing directly to schools, and that's where they get their biggest cut. When they go through us at the division office, as a member of LBCLN, we can realize significant savings, and that's what we're doing. Um, there was a question back. Go ahead, you had a question. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, I was just curious if these courses are editable. Editable? Yes. Okay. 100%. So what you get your own, you get the, the, the file that you import into your own instance? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we really want to make sure that's the case, that the teachers need control over their content yeah. and want to customize it. The only thing we suggest is that they uh, keep a really good backup so that each year they can take their old adjustments and plug into a new version. Yeah. So I mean, I'm, I'm interested in something like this, but I'm in Saskatchewan, I want to make sure that curriculum Matches, right? Or or how much of the curriculum matches just so that you know weighing you know developing our own versus tweaking something that's already done okay, so sure. Is there a way to get like a preview or, or I guess I could look at the we can uh, we can write some the curriculum documents, I guess. Yeah, it's a matter of uh, showing you some of the things that we can share. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So I mean no uh, yeah. Mapping is important, uh, so in my role, it's more important than maybe at the teacher level. Um, when I used to teach, I really didn't care so much about alignment initially. And if it excites the kids, if it sort of vaguely relates to what I'm doing or what I want to do next month, I'll do it. I don't care how much that aligns, right? Um, but, you know, back in the days, that wasn't an online course that we're talking about. There's certain little bits and pieces here and there, right? But as a member, like if we, we, we do need, there's lots of work that we can do to help align it better. And the more people are part of it, the easier it becomes. And um, Moodle is the only vehicle for delivery for this, or is it transferable? Well, we do it in Moodle, or basically we started in WebCT way back. Uh, we ended up changing over to Moodle just because, number one, uh, we have a lot of uh, members who are interested in Moodle as a cheaper, practical way to do it. And number two, uh, our decision to go to Moodle means that we're outside the proprietary factors and reasons or anything. So uh, we do have, we have had some districts uh, using D2L and Canvas and uh, Blackboard in BC and they would take courses and convert it. Um, you know, it's up to you if you want to convert it. It's fine. But I'm not going to do it for you, but yeah. it's up to you. Um, but the, yeah, what we found is most of those districts ended up moving over to Google over the years anyway. But yeah, can it be converted to other things? Yes. Will we do it? No. And, and the nice thing about Moodle is that you can choose where your instance of Moodle is going to be and you can move it. Uh, whereas if you go with the other proprietary, you are in their hosting structure, which has its advantages as well. But there's also disadvantages. In BC, we have one of the most restrictive privacy uh, laws in the country. So all of our servers have to be hosted in Canada, get into trouble and not. Uh, so probably a little different in Alberta, but um, the, the BC is driven by that, and again, to some extent as well. Which, which should be fair, which is why Canvas has now got servers in Canada, D2L has got servers in Canada, Blackboard doesn't. Right. Little example from last year, we, um, a former colleague of mine um, arranged um, uh, with um, the with French uh, instruction, <coughs> Ontario French. Capital Pardon me? Capital Or no, are you thinking in terms of C4? 
Yeah, we, we were we were in discussion with uh, they were going to hand us over all their French resources. That would be Seaport. That's it. Yeah, yeah. and and um, it was all housed in D two L, and the way they had um, built up their the infrastructure and their resources in that province, at least in, in, in that respect, was that everything is in D two L. It was uh, pointing into different D two Ls. You were authenticating into different D two Ls while you're in there. And it became a beautiful resources, lots of custom code in there, but it was not built for sharing. Uh, they were happy to give it to us. Uh, we were happy to uh, actually spend money on a D2L instance. And then we took a closer look at uh, all the resources, and it would have been a massive undertaking to migrate their content, um, you know, even into our own D2L instance. Right. So, and they realized that we realized that, and now it has started a bit of a thought process. You know, when you're building uh, resources for for teaching, you know, maybe start with uh, building for sharing in mind as well. Right, and, and that's yeah. And this is what I'm seeing here with with WCLN because there's an open source software being used. Uh, it's it's proven over time. Like you guys. 20 years. We, we lived the other side uh, many years ago where we had gone down to the top development top. It was basically a group that got bought out and then got shelved. Yeah. So we're scrambling to try to fix that. It cost us a ton of time and money. And we promised ourselves we'd never get tied to a proprietary group again. And that's why we everything we've done here uh, within WCLN won't uh, fall to that problem in the future. Um, and we'd love to be able to explore other. other um, LMS is the challenges that are not so simple. So if, um, you know, thanks for attending. Uh, if, if you are having any questions, uh, please feel to uh, contact me. Um, and if you are, you know, if you're at the, at the classroom level and you think, well, this is kind of cool, but what can I do with this? I, you know, you're using Drill or you're using something else. Um, just go ahead and share my email address with, uh, with your people. And get them in touch with us because um, I'm quite happy to travel out of it. I've done it before. And, um, unless people start thinking uh, you know, a little bigger outside of their own divisions, um, 